Alright guys, in the interest of full disclosure, you're looking at a cutaway of the two different types of cartridges I'm going to be using in this video. There was some confusion in my previous video and I'm hoping that uh, this will clear it up. Also there was some confusion about whether the 1842 is rifled. As you can see by that image there, it definitely is. So let's uh, go ahead and get started now that we got that out of the way. Alright guys, here we have the two different kinds of ammunition we're going to be shooting today out of this uh, 1842 rifle musket. We have the 69 caliber minis, those are 730 grains. And then we have the uh, 69 caliber round ball, which is 430 grains. Uh, 70 grains of powder, as you guys know that's the original charge. And on these we got 120 grains. So let's go ahead and get these opened up. and. Uh, Let's get this party train rolling. So we'll take kind of sucks after having to tear these up. When you consider how much work it is to make an arsenal pack correct, kind of sucks to have to tear them up. All for you guys. And let's go ahead and we'll put the round ball in the back and the mini ball up the front. All right, let's head out to the range. All right guys, we got a fun video lined up for today. It's gonna to be in response to quite a few of the comments I've been seeing in my other smooth bore versus rifle musket video. I seem to have stirred up a little bit of controversy in that I was shooting smooth bore ammunition out of this M1842 rifle musket uh, for both the smooth bore and rifle uh, tests. I was using round ball. So that confused some people. Some people were confused about the musket that itself. They were thinking that the 1842 was a smooth bore only gun and uh, that isn't the case. The 1842, they were all originally smooth bore. There are about 300,000 of them made and they were made with thicker barrels with the intention of rifling them later. Uh, only about 15 or 14,000 and change were eventually converted to this rifle pattern that you see here and outfitted with this sight. So this is my favorite configuration of the 1842 and this actually is my favorite uh, musket produced by the US government uh, for that matter. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to put some of those concerns to rest by comparing 69 caliber smooth bore ammunition, which is the round ball, versus the 69 caliber mini ball. We're going to be shooting the mini ball out of this and that is a 730 grain projectile. So. We're going to be pretty much replicating the test in that we're going to be, we're going to start out a little further out, probably 50 yards, but this target right here we're going to be shooting the mini ball at, and then the one on the left is going to receive the smooth bore ammunition, and we're going to do the 50 yards and 100 yards and probably beyond. So, and we'll shoot three rounds each, and we'll see how they compare against each other. So, I think that pretty much covers everything. Let's get started. All right, guys, here we are with the 1842. We're just over 30 yards. We're gonna figure it's a good starting point. We're gonna start with the conical ammunition or the mini ball. This has the original charge of 70 grains of musket powder. And check this out, guys, you're gonna like this. I'm gonna take this one completely out of its paper cartridge. We got a little more powder in there. All right, zoom in on this. That right there is a 730 grain, 69 caliber mini ball with three grease grooves. It is very close to the original. It's 0.685 in diameter. In fact, it's almost exact to the original. Now, being at that weight, 730 grains, this is heavier than 50 BMG ball ammo. Just to give you an idea of the sheer amount of lead we're about to send down range. All 
Alright, first round's out. I'm aiming for where the belts cross. Alright, now we're going to be switching over to round ball. I'm going to be hitting the left target. Make sure I'm actually gra grabbing round ball ammunition. A little bit more punch, a little bit more powder. Let's go down there and have a look what we did. Ooh, barrel's hot. All right, guys, as you can see, we got three rounds right in the line there with the uh, mini ball. Very, very nice group. And uh, keep in mind, this is standing. You know, I'm not firing this from the bench or from prone. You know, I'm standing out here. It's a breezy day. The breeze has an excellent ability to swing the musket barrel around. So, you know, if I was sitting at a bench, this would obviously be different, but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to see what the average guy could do standing up, you know, in a line, not from a bench. So, there's three rounds there. And moving over to the smoothbore ammunition, you're looking at a almost identical group, except for it's going diagonal in the other direction. But as far as group size, you're looking at pretty much identical. So let's move out to about 80 yards and see what happens. All right, guys, here we are with the 1842 at about 80 yards. Let's repeat the drill. Rifle musket first, or rifle ammunition first. Aiming for where the belts cross. I think I might have threw that one a little left. But hey, that's the reality. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot one more round. I think I threw one of them a little left and I wanna be sure that I represent this 
musket accurately. So I'm going to go ahead and load one more rifle round into it. So we'll have an extra round on target down there. Switching over to smooth bore ammunition. Let's see what we did. All right, as you can see, here's the target at 80 yards with the rifle musket ammunition. Apparently, I put an extra ball on there for no reason. I thought I threw one, but as you can see, we got a nice little group. One, two, three, four. So these were the original three. At 30 and 80 yards, every single shot on that target is a kill shot, an easy kill shot. That's a 730 grain, 69 caliber hole. Pretty damn good looking group. Come over here, and you can see that here's the original three, here, here, and here. That one's got the mark next to it. And then here's the new three, here, here, and here. That one I feel like I threw kind of high uh, because when I was loading, I was having trouble getting one of the balls down the barrel that just got in there wrong with the wrapper. And uh, I cut myself on the muzzle pretty good trying to yank it down. So I feel like I very possibly could have thrown one. Um, you know, I don't know if that would be a fatality or you would just lose your ear. But uh, I think that was user error. As you can see, the ball still performs plenty good not as good not quite as good as that mini ball but so far it's definitely keeping pace with it let's move out to a longer distance and see what we can do all right guys here we are at a full hundred yards let's get going and see what we can do rifle ammunition first Where it gets a little more challenging standing up 10 pound musket at this kind of distance a little more challenging all 
All right, switching over to smooth bore ammunition. All right, guys, here we are. Here's our 100 yard results. As you can see, it looks like we only have two on the target. Let's see, that was a 50 yard hole. So there's either two holes right next to each other right there, or we missed one. Now you'll remember when I was shooting the video, I said I felt like I pulled one. So we got one there and one there. Uh, both kill shots, or possibly two there and one there. Both kill shots at 100 yards. As you can see, I'll remove the pasties. Whoop. So as you can see, overall, we got a really nice group. This is, like I said, out to 100 yards. Oop, there's another one right there. Overall, those are all kill shots out to 100 yards, and that's standing, and it's pretty breezy and kind of gusty today. So excellent, excellent group in my opinion. Let's come over here to the smooth bore. As you can see here with the smooth bore ammunition and then these new ones right here are the 100. So as you can see it appears we actually got a better group with the round ball on the last three shots than we did with the uh, mini ball. So that's kind of interesting. Also another thing that's interesting, both targets point of aim was where the belt crossed. So as you can see the round ball shot consistently higher than the mini ball. So I'll go ahead, I'll remove the blue tape here so we can just get a look at the group without any distractions. All right, so as you can see, the round ball did really, really good. The mini ball over here, you can see, definitely has a slight advantage as far as accuracy is concerned. You see our, our group here is a little more consistent we got a lot more closer to the X ring, a nice small group. So as far as overall accuracy, I'm going to give the mini ball a definite edge. But the round ball, as you can see, it really holds its own. Um, it's not inaccurate out of this rifle musket by any means. So let's talk about historical, historical correctness. Um, Cause that was another thing that was brought up in my video. During the Civil War, the M1842 muskets were used by both the North and the South. Like I said before the video, there are about 300,000 of these produced, and they were pretty evenly spaced between Northern and Southern arm armories. So when the war broke out, you know, there was a big time shortage of arms, so both sides grabbed these up in great numbers. However, research that I've done suggests that while in the north they had plenty of uh, plenty of ammunition plants that made any kind of rifle ammunition that you could come up with for the 69 cal that is conical ammunition that is round ball ammunition and that is buck and ball in the south according to what I found in my research the only uh, ammunition that the south produced for the 69 caliber guns would have been uh, round ball solid and buck and ball with buck and ball being the most common so as far as me shooting a smooth bore bullet out of here or a single ball 
that's plenty historically accurate, especially for like a Confederate, because any of the rifle ammunition that the Confederacy would have had for the 1842 rifle musket would have been surplus ammunition that had already been in storage before the war. They would have quickly ran out and gone straight to smoothbore ammunition, which is like I said, either just round ball or buck and ball, with uh, the reference being towards a buck and ball. And the rifle musket would have shot any type of ammunition out of that just fine. They would have had no problem with any of that kind of ammunition. Like I said, in the north, they would have had ac access to plenty of the rifle musket ammo. But uh, like I said, as far as it being totally historically incorrect to fire a round ball out of this, no. It's not historically incorrect. And on top of that, the biggest reason why I did it in that video and why I do it usually is because round ball ammunition is about half the cost of the rifle ammunition. Remember, this is 730 grain bullet. These are 430 grain. It's about half the weight and half the cost to produce. Also, mini balls are very difficult to make properly. It's one of the most difficult things you'll ever do in reloading is making a proper mini ball where that skirt will expand to fit the bore properly. And you know, if you don't make it, if you make them too hard, the uh, skirts don't expand enough. They don't grip the rifling, and then you don't get nice groups like that. If you make them too soft, the ball part of the conical separates and you get a dislodged skirt about halfway up your barrel. Try and get that out. It's not fun, I promise you. So nine times out of 10 when I come to the range, you're gonna see me shooting round ball out of my favorite M1842. It's fun to shoot the big six, eight, five balls, but they're expensive. So that's pretty much the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed what we had to show you. And uh, I'll catch you next time. All right, guys, this is what you look like after a full day of shooting black powder. All black, grimy, sometimes bloody, but uh, it's all in good fun. I really, really love this uh, 1842 rifle musket. Uh, it's an excellent reproduction by Army Sport. I've had it now for many, many years. I reenacted with it through all the 150th. Uh, reenactments all the big ones and some of even the smaller ones reenacted with it real heavy put it through a lot of abuse this gun scene mud and ice and sand and all kinds of stuff she's never failed me so I know that this was a reliable musket in back in the day just as it is now and uh, it's a real joy to shoot